meeting. So what he's saying here is if you're loving the world, then at that moment you're not loving God. It's impossible to love God while simultaneously loving that which hates him. Makes sense. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me, period. In the prophets, he said, I am God and there is no other. I am God and there's none like me. I will share my glory with no one. He's very exclusive, this God of ours. In Joshua 24, Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There's a choice. In James 4.4, he says, you adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? People who are friends with the world are the enemies of God. You can't love both at the same time. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 6.24, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. If I were to tell you that you can't love your husband and your boyfriend at the same time, I doubt I would get any argument. Am I right? You cannot love your wife and your girlfriend at the same time. To love your girlfriend means by definition you are not loving your wife. Am I right? It's an exclusive relationship, this marriage thing. What you will discover is that in this exclusivity, intimacy grows. It is in exclusivity that intimacy grows. This is obviously true in a marriage. When you are only for each other, then you have the fertile ground for intimacy to grow. It's also true in our relationship with God. If we are only for him, then we have the fertile ground where intimacy can grow. 